Jeff here with Ecom Geeks. Today we're going to be talking about how to customize your checkout in order to give your customers the best possible checkout experience. So let's get to it. So first things first, we're going to want to customize what our checkout actually looks like. So to do this, we're going to click on Online Store. Under our current theme, we're going to click on Customize. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add any product at all to our cart. In this case, I've, I've already added a, a product. So we go to our checkout and we're actually going to click the checkout button. So we're going to click the open checkout settings here. Now this will allow us to customize our entire checkout image, the, the way things are presented, the different colors, etc, etc. So currently I just have the background set as blue and this set is white obviously and we can see the, the color of the checkout buttons you know you, you get the picture so there are other options that you can do and it really depends on what kind of store you are what you're selling in terms of what you want to do so for example at the top of our store if we wanted to we can actually add an image so for example let's say we wanted to add this one with the tie and the watch so now you can see that it's added it at the top of our banner there now, while going through this process, you might want to see how this looks on mobile. So if you click this button here at the top, you can actually switch over to mobile and see what it looks like. For now, we're going to stick on desktop. One thing to pay attention to is it's highly recommended that you use this image size. I'm just using one of our stock images here, but you can see that it's just taking the middle part of the image, so do pay attention to what the recommended size is. The next thing we can do is we can customize the logo and this is something that most people will want to do. So if I select an image here, it's going to replace this title here with whatever image I select. So there you go, you can see that it's changed over to the logo. We can now edit this as well if we want to perhaps center it, uh, if we wanted to make it larger or smaller, medium size, we can change all those options there. Typically I prefer it on the left side just to keep things tidy. We can also do a background image for the main area here. So let's go ahead and do that. So for now, I'm actually going to select this image here. And just like that, we can see that the image is posted in the background. If you want to leave this without an image, you can always click remove and instead edit the background color. So if you have a particular color that's kind of you use throughout your store, you might want to change it over to something like that. It's really up to you. Typically, I, I prefer it just being a little bit basic, but that's just my own preferences. For now, I'm just going to keep it as this darker gray. The other option is to edit the form fields, and that's where people actually edit their personal information in order to complete the checkout. So, for example, we can just make them transparent. If we want to blend things more into the background that we selected or perhaps the image that we've selected. Similar to what else we've done, we can also select the image for something that goes on the right side here. Again, you can see that since this isn't the right image size, we're only getting a little piece of the image. So I'm going to cancel that for now. Just keep that in mind if you do decide to add an image to the background here. If instead you just like a flat color, you can always select that and have it adjusted on the right hand side here. Next thing you can adjust is the different font settings. So by default, it's going to use the, the fonts that are used by the system. You can always change it to whatever sort of font you want. I'm going to leave it as is for now. The final option we have here is to change the colors of the buttons. So by default, it's going to have these guys a little here. We can, if we want to, adjust it to any sort of thing that we want. And you can see that as I change these, that the button colors and the links change as I please. Typically what I suggest is having a logo instead of your, your name there and having the backgrounds as flat colors. I mean this is completely up to you but then it translates very easily between mobile and desktop. It's just a safer option to go with. Again it really depends on what sort of products you're marketing. Now let's take a look at some of the other things that we can change with our checkout. Before we go on to the next section there's something that I recommend you check and that's under the preferences. If you scroll down, you can find that at the bottom here there's spam protection. I definitely recommend having this enabled. It should be enabled by default and as well with the contact forms. This will help avoid having bots contact your site and spam your site. 
So the next major section for your checkout is under settings. Click settings and then go to checkout. So let me go through these different options and what I typically recommend. So customer accounts. So this is when they go to checkout if they are required to create an account with your store, if they have the option to, or if accounts are completely disabled. Usually I recommend having accounts are optional. This allows your customers the opportunity to create an account with your store, but doesn't force them to create an account. Like I said, it depends on what sort of products you're marketing. I would just suggest not having accounts disabled because this will allow you to collect emails so that you can send out newsletters and other means of marketing to your customers who've already completed a checkout. Next, we have the different customer checkout options. So by default, it will select the one where you can do either a phone or an email address. I'd highly recommend selecting the other one because that kind of forces your customers entering their email address again so that you can remarket to them. In this section here, I recommend having both of these checks so that they have the option to have their phone number or email to receive shipping updates and the option to download the Shopify app to just keep track of their order. In terms of the form options, I typically recommend that you force them to have both their first and last name. If you want, you can have company name as an option. Most of the time you're going to want to keep that hidden because most of the time you're, you're going to be having just people checking out as opposed to businesses. You do typically want to have the address line too for optional as you want to ensure that people in apartments and units are able to receive their order to the door as opposed to having it shipped just to their building. You can also have the shipping address phone number. Usually you can keep it as optional. Sometimes you might want to keep it hidden. It's not really a huge requirement, but it keeps it in there. Next option we have is for tipping. Now, typically most stores are not going to be using this. Perhaps if you're providing a service or something like that, you might want to have that selected. It's really up to you. In terms of order processing, I typically recommend both of these options selected. Your average customer is going to have the shipping address as the billing address by default, so that just auto fills it in. And it also gives people the option that their browser will automatically fill in all the options for their address. For after an order has been paid, I typically recommend having the middle one here selected. You, unless you're going for a specific type of product, you do not want to have the orders automatically fulfilled because you want more control over that. You do, however, have the option of having the gift cards already filled so that they get their gift card right away. After an order has been completed, yes, you do want to typically have it archived. You can have additional scripts here if you want. Typically, don't need to, but if you want to, you can actually change some things that will make your checkout experience much more unique. Under email marketing, I usually recommend having the pre-select the sign up option. By default, they'll normally be selected to sign up for your email. Definitely keep the abandoned checkout as is. You want to ensure that anybody who's gone to the checkout phase but hasn't completed their order are reminded that they have an order and they might want to complete it. Lastly, if you want to change your checkout language, you can definitely do here. Oftentimes, you're just going to keep the checkout language as is. After you've made changes, definitely remember to click the save button. So there you go. Those are all the different options you have in order to customize your checkout experience. Ensure that your checkout follows the same feeling, the same colors, the same theme as your main store. You don't want to shock customers with something that's very different from what they're already used to. That's it for now. Catch you next time. Looking to improve your store? Hire a geek. We offer individual store optimizations, one-on-one -on -one training, as well as workshops. Check out the description below for more information.